In this video I'm going to go through um, very quickly the laws of exponents. Um, I am doing probably just a couple examples of each one because I am assuming that it is a review that you've already been exposed to this once and you just need a refresher um, course like on how you're going to handle your laws of exponents. Um, so for the first one in my um, classes I generally tell students that negative exponents are not allowed so we're going to get rid of all our negative exponents. There is an actual rule for that um, when you look in textbooks you will find that defined. However just an easy shortcut way to remember to do this is just to move it to the opposite location and make it positive. In other words if it's sitting in the numerator you can move it to the bottom to the denominator and make it positive. If it's sitting in the bottom and it is, that's the denominator, you move it to the top, you can make it positive. Alright, so we get rid of all of our negative exponents by moving them to the opposite locations. So in this one I would have a y to the positive 3 in the top, and I would have an x to the positive 4 in the bottom. Alright, and that's just removing those negative exponents. Now if you take a look at something like this, um, the whole denominator numerator thing isn't as easy to see because you just have an x to the negative 2. If you think of that as an x to the negative 2 over 1, then there's your fraction. This is your numerator. This is your denominator. There is also an imaginary 1 coefficient that sits there in the top. Okay, now our rule says that you are going to move it to the opposite location to make it positive. You move the base, you move the exponent, but you don't move that coefficient right there. So the part that goes to the bottom is just the x to the negative 2. So that's the only thing that goes to the negative 2. I have the imaginary 1 coefficient that stays in that numerator and then x to the, oops, x to the 2. Let's get that negative out of there because as soon as you move it, it becomes positive. Okay, so that's just a positive 2. All right, now going back to look at that first example, all right, there's the imaginary one there, there's the imaginary one there. Those ones stayed put. The only thing that got moved was those bases with the exponents. All right, so that takes care of removing your negative exponents and an easy way to do it. Okay, there's also a rule that says that any number raised to the zero power is always one. So it really doesn't matter what it is. You know, x to the zero, that's going to be a one. 71 raised to the zero, that's going to be one. Any number raised to the zero power is always one. And so if it's in um, a problem, then you can um, cross it out. You can eliminate it because multiplication by one is not going to have any bearing. So most of the time when we're trying to simplify rational expressions that have bases with exponents and we see something raised to the zero power, then we cross it out. Another rule that we've got is a product rule that says when multiplying like bases, you add the exponents. Okay, so the rule applies only to the exponents, has nothing to do with coefficients. So on this scenario, I'm multiplying. All right, these are coefficients, so I'm going to multiply those like normal because the, it has nothing to do with the rule. So 2 times 3 is going to give me a 6. All right, then I'm going to look for like bases. I have like bases right here. I've got an x to the 4th, and I have an x to the 5th. So those are like bases. Now I can add those exponents. So 4 plus 5 is going to give me a 9, so an x to the 9th, and then y squared. I'm just going to multiply that in the product. There are no other y's in the problem, so I'm just going to leave the y squared there. Okay, so um, that one's pretty straightforward, so we're just going to do one example of that. When multiplying like bases, you add the exponents. Okay, now I want to take a look at um, a power raised to a power. All right, and a power raised to a power, uh, the rule says to multiply the exponents, okay? So on this one, generally the way we look at this is we just think, oh, okay, 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is going to be a 6, so this one's going to be an x to the 6th. We'll deal with the coefficients down here a little bit later. If you have more than one exponent on the inside, then that power raised to a power rule has to be applied to everything on the inside. So I've got to multiply 3 times 2, 3 times 3, and 3 times 4. So that's going to give me an x to the 2 times 3, which is 6. A y to the 3 times 3 is going to be a 9. And on my z, 3 times 4 is going to be a 12. Okay, so multiple things inside raise each and every one of them to that power. Okay, now on this one, on the first two, you know, we had those imaginary coefficient 1s in front, so we really didn't even have to deal with it. On this one, we have a 3. 
okay? Now, everything on the inside gets multiplied or raised to that 2 on the outside, okay? Now, I'm always multiplying exponents. Well, every time when I did that, it was 3 times the exponent 4, 3 times the exponent 3, 3 times the exponent 2. This number 3 has an imaginary exponent of 1. And so when I multiply and raise it to a power, it's going to be 2 times that 1, 2 times 3, 2 times the negative 2. All right, so I'm actually going to multiply that out, showing that. So 2 times that 1 is going to be a 2. So I'm really going to have a 3 squared out in front. And then an x times a 2 times 3 is 6. And then on the y, 2 times negative 2 will give me a negative 4. So we've got a couple things now that we're going to have to deal with. A little bit earlier we said we had negative exponents and we wanted to get rid of them. So we're going to have to get rid of this negative 4. And then we're going to have to go ahead and multiply this out. 3 squared is going to give me a 9 coefficient in front, which is probably the number one common mistake. The x to the sixth is going to stay because it's positive. We're not going to do anything to it. But this, we want to move to the bottom. And if you think again of this whole entire thing being over one, when I move this to the bottom, it's going to be to the denominator and it will then have a positive exponent of four. So y to the fourth. Okay. So that's kind of implementing two rules all in the same one. All right, now let's take a look at the last one that I want to do. All right, there is a quotient rule, okay, and traditional rule in textbooks, when dividing like bases, subtract the exponents. Okay, perfectly good rule, and it works. However, I've kind of revamped it for my students. Um, a lot of times my students don't like negative exponents, so we try to get rid of them, and we try not to um, deal with them at all. And implementing the traditional textbook rule of when dividing like bases subtract the exponents, you always have to subtract top from bottom. And we kind of eliminate that. So I've adjusted this for my students. Okay, so this is definitely my method and way to do this. All right, we get rid of any negative exponents first that might be in the problem. If there aren't any, then you don't have to worry about it. Okay, then we just subtract. We subtract like normal. Okay, it doesn't make any difference. We just subtract like normal and put it where the highest exponent is. All right, and when I actually work this out, then it's going to make sense. Okay, all right, so we've got a quotient going on here on this one. Okay, well, coefficients, the rules don't apply to, so that would be a 10 divided by 2. That's going to give me a 5, so I know I have a 5 coefficient. Now, on this one, this one's just straightforward. You're going to subtract like normal. 8, take away 5, it's going to give me a 3. The x to the 8th is the highest power compared to x to the fifth. Okay, so x to the eighth is the highest power, so I need this in the numerator. When I divide 10 divided by 2, I get 5, or it's in the numerator. And if you look at it like this, 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 10 five times, that 5 is in the numerator. All right, and then I subtract, I'm going to put my x to the third in the numerator as well. I get a 5x to the third. All right, and that's almost too straightforward that you can't hardly even see how this applies. Okay, so let's go on to the next example. All right, I've got 14 over 20. Okay, I'm going to reduce that because that's coefficient. Ignore the rest of the problem. That's just a plain old fraction. I'm going to reduce the lowest terms. I'm going to divide them both by 2. So 2 into 14 goes 7 times. 2 into 20 goes 10 times. Okay, now implementing this rule, let's go ahead and start our answer here. We got a 7, we got 10. All right, now implementing the rule on the x's. All right, well, I'm just going to subtract like normal. I'm going to take 5, take away 2. 5 take away 2 is 3. All right, now, where am I going to put my x to the third? Well, I'm going to choose to put it in the bottom because x to the fifth is higher than an x to the second. So I will have an x to the third in the bottom. Now I'm going to take a look at those y's. Okay, again, I'm just going to subtract like normal. So 8 take away 6 is going to be a 2. Now, where am I going to put it? Am I going to put it in the top or the bottom? Well, y to the eighth is higher than y to the sixth, so my y to the second has to go in the top. All right, now on my z's, all right, I have a negative exponent. I want to get rid of that negative exponent first. So I'm going to take it and move it to the bottom. So that would be an x squared. It's no longer in the top. And it's a positive x squared because I got rid of the negative. All right, now I no longer have quotient rule because I've got two z's in the bottom. This is when multiplying like bases, I add those exponents. So I'm going to have a z to the fifth in the bottom. Okay, so 
that is what I'm talking about as far as subtracting. Put it where its highest is. If there's a negative, get rid of it first. All right. Then we never have to worry about just subtracting top from bottom and getting a negative answer and then deciding where it goes. All right. This this is a really nice method. My students really do like this. Okay. Now on this one, I've kind of done um, a couple rules um, implementing here. This is going to be a power raised to a power. All right. But then we're going to see how we're going to manipulate this around a little bit. All right. We want to. Um, that's six. We've got to remember that there's the imaginary one there. I've got a power raised to a power, so I'm going to take that negative two, and I'm going to multiply it times each one of those. So I'm going to choose to do power raised to a power first. You wouldn't have to do it that way, and I'll maybe even work it out twice here to show you that it doesn't matter the order in which you do it. Okay, but if I do that, then I'm going to have a six to the negative two and an x to the negative six. All right, well, what's the deal with we can't have negative exponents, so we're going to move them to the opposite location. And again, you're going to want to think, okay, this is over 1, so it's in the numerator right now. So I am going to move that to the denominator and then make everything positive. All right, now, this base and exponent gets moved to the bottom. This base and exponent gets moved to the bottom as well. Now there still is going to be an imaginary coefficient one that's going to stay in our top there. So it's going to be one over a six to the second and an x to the sixth. Okay, then we can go ahead and multiply that six squared out there for a 36. Let's go ahead and write it down here. So one over 36 x to the sixth. All right, now that was me choosing to do power raised to a power first. Okay, technically you would not have had to have done it that way. If I wanted to get rid of that negative first, okay, let's do it in a different color here. I could have done that. All right, so let's say I would have looked at this and said, okay, I've got a six, x to the third raised to the negative two. All right, and I first saw the negative exponent there and it's like, oh, well, let's get rid of the negative exponent. Okay, well, we could do that. So then you would think of this whole entire thing over one and it going to the bottom, okay, to make that a positive two. All right, and again, you would have still had the imaginary one that would have been sitting in the front there. So then you would have immediately had a one over a six x to the third raised to the positive two. All right, now you would have implemented power raised to a power rule, that two times the two and the two times the three which then would give me a one over a six squared x to the sixth and multiplying out that six squared I would have gotten the exact same thing as one over 36 x to the sixth. All right so just an example there showing you know, which rule do you do first? Well it really doesn't make any difference as long as you apply the rules appropriately and don't make any mistakes. Okay but definitely this is just a little twist on the way I do the quotient rule with my students. They seem to really like it and it definitely works. Definitely thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.